Hey, welcome to MaxAid tutorial number 37, Video Control Part 3. So, when we left off, we had set up our beautiful uh, JIT Movie Player. It has audio, it has speed can. Whoa, it's also not locked. Um, <laughs> let's lock that patcher before we go demonstrating. So, it's got speed control and uh, looping points that we can manage. There we go. Speeding along there, back, forth, great. And uh, I can't even think of all the other great things it has, but it certainly has them. In this, uh, in this tutorial, I wanted to take all of this and turn it finally into a Visi like package. And if you're not familiar with Visi, that's fine. And if you are, they have a little modular component. So what we have here is a nice little uh, video player and looper that you could call your own. So just for our own sanity, let's um, pause this and start um, thinking about all the things that we want to go in and out of this, imagining it as a patcher that stands alone by itself. So um, we're going to start thinking about its presentation mode and how it starts up and all of that sort of thing. So first of all, when we when we start this, what on earth is that doing up there? A bang. It shouldn't even be there. Okay. Um, when this whole thing starts up, of course, it will be in presentation mode and we'll want this to turn on and we'll want this to go find its file. So let's put a load bang up there with all the appropriate things that we want this to do. We want this to definitely turn on, not just to turn what it, to whatever it was before. So um, I'm going to actually send it a message one. So this will bang, it'll give that a one, and it'll turn this on. This just needs a bang, and it'll be the prefix for that. And um, and we can also turn on our audio automatically when we start. And I think that might be um, all of the things that we well, uh, and also let's just put one uh, to the uh, a bang to our little uh, pipe thing that tells it to get the movie duration if it already happens to have one loaded, which it shouldn't, but you never know. Okay, so there we go. We've got our load bangs all ready to go there. And um, let's uh, also consider that with, with all of these different adjustments, moving the loop points, etc., etc., we may want to have a preset object. So type letter N, preset, and there it is. Um, I always kind of like the single row version of these. Nobody ever really uses a million of them. And then what we want to do is be able to set this. We'll connect this to whatever we want um, to always play the same thing. Now, I'm not going to say, for example, I don't think the movie is important, but the sort of speed. Um, I'm going to hold the shift key down while I do this. The speed and the loop points and even the um, looping function seem to be good things to uh, to have some control over. So um, yeah, so that, that looks good. So now let's imagine that we're going to put all of this in, what are we going to put in presentation here? So um, I would say the uh, toggle. Now I'm going to hold the shift key down again and I'm just going to start hitting everything that I think needs to be in presentation mode. Uh, 
The U menu, of course, does the live gain, yes. The audio to turn on and off, the speed. I would like to see the, the rate myself when I see this. And uh, the loop slides, the, um, what would we call this one? The time slider. And we're going to put all these, and we're going to go over here and put them all in um, presentation mode. Include in presentation. There we go. All right. Now, one little thing. We don't know whether we got the slider or the P window here, so I'm going to move one of them over, and that should tell me which one we got. Apparently, neither. No, this one, this one says it is in presentation mode, and then the P window, I'm going to click on the P window now, is not in presentation mode. So I'm going to click that. And now let's just check and see what all's in presentation mode. Put it in presentation mode. Um, looking pretty good. Oh, we don't have any way to play our movie yet. So let's, uh, let's work on that. I would rather just hit play to play at regular speed. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and make a, a message up here that says play. Type M. I like it in all caps, not that it matters to anyone. Play. Um, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, and uh, we'll just double click them and do it that way, and then stop. and pause. And in fact, if you recall, we can also um, do um, another message. This is sort of funny um, because we have to translate all these anyway. You could put um, the forward things like that and another one with the backwards. These I'm just using the arrows that are the capitalized version of comma and period. All right, so I'll put all these in a line here so that and um, then um, we're going to make play uh, go to this three over here. And we're going to make pause, go to the two, stop. We're going to have to send another message that is stop. Um, this is sort of funny. Um, jitter and max objects understand things capitalized or small. So if you send it a capitalized stop, it won't pay any attention to it at all. You have to send it stop. So stop means stop. And then that goes directly over to the JIT movie. And uh, likewise for the forward and reverse, in the uh, last video we had uh, checked uh, fast forward and reverse, and the messages were MFF, I believe, will be this one. And that gets connected to the JIT movie. And the other was uh, RW, I think. So type M and then type RW. And we'll check this momentarily. Uh, that also goes to the JIT movie. Don't forget to connect this to that. So, that, so if play does something, stop does something, pause does something, this does something. Um, let's see if they work. Why, why bother with um, actually looking them up? So we hit play, and it plays. We go uh, fast forward a little bit. It seems to fast forward a little bit. How about reverse? Yeah, it reverses. Stop. 
Good. Stops. Pause. Pause puts it at zero, so play takes it back to three. Um, and stop just stops playing. Very good. Okay, well, they all work. And that means we put them all in presentation mode. So I highlight all of them, come over here and say include in presentation, and um, also the preset. We want to see that in presentation as well. Perfect. And so just to make sure that we that uh, everything's working again, I'm going to lock my patcher. I'm going to set the loop points at the very outside with loop on and shift click on this to make that setting one. And then I'm going to move the loop points much closer to the middle and make the whole thing run backwards um, and shift click and that's uh, setting two. So now we'll just be able to see the difference between setting one, there we go, going forward the entire length and setting two going unfortunately not. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So Oh, I see. This thing's actually just out of place. Well, thank goodness for that. At least we don't have to fix anything real. You see the slider, we moved it over to look at it. We put it in the wrong place. So let's put it back where it's supposed to be. Right, lined up there, lined up there. Very nice. Um, okay, and uh, let's lock our patch again and make sure this thing is actually behaving here. Um, here's the loop point. Oh, there it is, resetting, going right to that loop point. Perfect. Make them a little shorter. And a little shorter, just so we don't have to wait as long. Working perfectly. Okay, everything's working. We've got our presets. We've got everything mostly prepared to go into presentation mode. Um, and let's see how presentation mode's looking now. Uh, I'm going to stop this thing. Pause. Okay, presentation mode looking pretty good. So now we can unlock our patcher and start moving this stuff to um, wherever we decide we want to put it. So uh, of course you're going to want to put it in the upper left hand corner because that is the place where it goes when it opens normally. And uh, there we go. Um, I would like those to actually be the same size. There would set them to the same size. I'm going to put my um, presets over here. Come on, presets. There we go. Make them a little. Oh, there. So we can set this really to whatever size we want. And then to get these. Um, what do you call them? Bubbles? Tubble, bubble tubbles? Uh, go over to the inspector here and bubble size, slot size. Here we have eight. Let's try something more in line with the font size and go for 12 and see if that gives us what we want. Just clicking outside that. Almost. I'm going to go a little bigger. How about 14? It'll be easier to hit. There we go. Looking good. So now we just adjust that. Whoops, very nice. Okay, uh, here's our movie. So here's our play bar right under here. Or is it maybe something more like this? Uh, our audio down the left hand side with the audio button here. I kind of like the audio to be big. And we'll condense this to sort of fit that. And we'll move all these just a little bit closer. And then we'll finesse them a little more. Um, 
uh, I think we can, th th these don't have any real reason to be so wide, so I'm just going to move them like that, move this one up to here, like that. Speed, same way. This is a, you know, uh, something you may or may not want to do. You might want to also have speed be a different color. I don't know. Maybe we should go uh, make that uh, yellow or something racy. Over in the inspector, the on color, make it yellow. There we go. Okay. It's different anyway. And then the rate, this would be optional. You don't really need to know what the rate is, but why not know? And then we'll take all of these and stick them right up here. Um, not quite loving it, but uh, I guess these are kind of big. I don't need these to be so big. We can make this a little longer to make it more in scale with our movie there. There's the thing, and we grab all these and move them over. We're going to be getting close here. Okay, and then we can just uh, make this take up the slack there with some extra. There we go. Ah, not bad. Um, if you're like me, you, you, uh, like to have the, uh, panel in here for the color, and, uh, I can show you why, um, or you can just color the patcher. Let's try coloring the patcher today. So we'll just, uh, go hit the patcher inspector over here and get the locked background color and um, select your color wisely. You have to live with it. Um, I'm going to go with something mildly orange, I think. Uh, and we'll just put this over here, maybe something. You don't want it to, to overdo it, you know? So I'm going to say, go ahead, give me that color. Uh, I think I've overdone it. I'm going to say that color. There we go. Um, Although it's similar to the speed. Oh, darn it. The difficulties of, uh, of this. I'll make it a little more orangey. How's that? Okay, that's the color I select. You may select your own, as you wish. And now we will lock our patcher and see how that looks. Oh my god, horrifying. It's okay, it's mine, not yours. You do a better job on yours. And now, finally, um, let's make a comment here. Oops, unlock your patcher, type letter C, and type in nice big bold letter uh, uh, John's super video thing. Don't really type super video, super, super, super video thing. Okay, you can name your own. Now, you want to take this object and make sure that the background color is actually like white or so. Well, first, I'm going to make my text color. Uh, I'm going to make the background color white because, and right now it's at zero opacity. I'm going to make it white and so that we can read it and. Um, what else? I'm going to make the font a little bigger, 14, going to make it bold. And then, just to be fancy, I'm going to make my text color mostly transparent so that, well, you'll see what happens. It'll, uh, oh, and I hate that it's not centered, so I'm going to go back here and center my text. There we go. Okay, super video thing.
There we go. There we go. Lock your patcher. And it is looking pretty darn good. So, um, uh, quickly imagining that we'll want to, I'm just going to close the inspector a minute so I can grab the corner here that we're actually going to want it to open more or less to this size if we had it open and also without uh, its sidebars and whatnot. Anyway, um, a view, define an initial window location, um, and we also want to make sure that the patcher itself, get the patcher here, always opens in um, in presentation mode. And there it is. Scroll down, you see under view, open in presentation. There it is. And show horizontal scroll bar. Uh, now we're still going to work on it a tiny bit, so I'm not going to get rid of these yet, but we will at some point. So we'll get rid of our thing there, save our patcher as it is. So there's the super, super, super video thing. And now we're going to give it some inlets and outlets. I'm going to make this window bigger again. I'm going to, whoops, I went right off the, right out of my recording window. Um, so I'm going to take it out of presentation mode and unlock it. And we want a couple things in here. We want to be able to read any movie. So we're going to put a... Um, an inlet here. Type the letter N and type inlet. I still have caps lock on, but it, it seems to have managed. Um, so for an inlet, we're going to want to be able to tell it to read a movie. And to do that, we need the message read. That way it can read any movie, right? So we'll hook that up to our JIT movie player. And then on the output side, of course, we're going to want the audio as well as the video to come out of here. So let's get uh, type N and outlet, type outlet. And I usually just uh, duplicate these things when I, once I make them. So we're going to want two audios and one video coming out of here. And uh, here's our audio um, coming out right here. That'll be audio A. And going around the speaker, audio, audio B, otherwise known as right. <laughs> and then the video coming out of the Jitter movie, we're going to bring that down to uh, the third outlet and um, I think we could also have another um, inlet here and this one we could just use it to toggle um, uh, play and pause so why don't we um, just put a, a toggle here and then a select and type letter N, select, zero, and one. And if you get a zero, it's going to hit pause. And if you get a one, it's going to hit play. And I think that that should do it. Um, da, 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 you got these things going out here. Yeah, this is all looking pretty good. So what does all this mean? Let's um, put it back in presentation mode. Save it, of course. Save it. Put it, uh, lock it. You can see the line here, by the way, that shows the... Um, presentation view and uh, we can change that 
to that. And then um, if we get our patcher inspector out here, oops, love, uh, I love when it does that. Uh, I love when it does that too. Um, get our patcher inspector out here, we'll probably want to get rid of the toolbars. So show horizontal scroll bar, no, we don't want that. Show toolbar on open, no, we don't want that. Show vertical scroll bar, no, we don't want that. Um, we do want it to open in presentation, but that's about it. And uh, I think that will cover it. So we click out here, we click save, and we hit close. And now we go up here and open our uh, recent file. That's it, 35M8. Uh, this is, uh, there we go, named incorrectly, but what can you do? Um, and look how beautifully it opened there. And that is just great. Let's see if we can, does it have anything loaded? No, but we can have this play like so. There's that. Um, playing backwards. Hey, we forgot to include our radio buttons. What a mistake. Okay, let's get back there and do it. Hello, people. What are you doing here? Okay, so uh, take it out of presentation mode and get our inspector open here. Come on, inspector. And then we'll put these, oops, unlock it, and put these in the presentation mode. I had just forgotten them. There we go. And go back to presentation mode. See how it looks. So these are all the way over here now. Now we have to find a space for them. Holy crow. Well, who's ever going to use that many presets, presets right? So we can put the uh, this little guy here. God, it looks cute, like it was meant to be there. And then we'll put this over here. Eh, you know, why not? Why not get as many presets as we can? There you go. And there you go. Ooh, can't get one more, can we? Nope. So we'll just move this over a little bit. Center it. There we go. And so I realized one little thing about this, um, which is that because this stores the looping points, if you're not storing the movie at the same time, the looping points aren't going to make any sense because they could actually be outside of the movie and that could cause quite a kerfluffle. So um, let's take this out of presentation mode real quickly so we can make one more little patch cord to go from your preset to your actual movie because it doesn't make any sense to have a looping point at six seconds in a three second movie. It, it just confuses the machinery. So let's go ahead and lock it, put it in um, presentation mode, and now um, when we click on one for basketball, we can say, okay, we want the very beginning to the very end, and we'll shift click on that. And then we'll go to countdown and say we just want the very uh, middle of countdown. We, we don't really want anything that's not either five or six. And we like five and six, you know, and we're going to play them backwards. And we'll shift click on number two. Whoops. I just uh, undid it. There we go. By clicking on it instead of shift clicking on it. And now I'm going to shift click it. And see, we get one. We get all of basketball, we get two, we get the movie. Um, running backwards, waiting to get to the loop points, failing to hit the loop points. 
Hmm. What could it be? What could it be? Maybe... Uh, I think I got the problem here. What's happening is that when we're hitting preset, it is uh, switching this menu very quickly and also putting these uh, sliders at a particular spot faster than uh, JIT.movie can load the movie. So what we have to do is somehow slow down the looping points to the movie. But I know, I think, how to do that. Maybe. Here we go. Um, oops. Um, unlocking your patcher and then taking out of presentation mode, we come over here and we see our lovely pack object here, which is receiving the numbers from the sliders which are being told where to go by the preset. I can't think of any way to slow preset down um, because it deals with the menu and the sliders at the same time, but the sliders output the number to our pack object and then subsequently to JIT movie. So let's pull pack down here a little bit closer and use these pipe objects here. So I'm going to uh, option click on one. I think that's alt click on a PC, but I can't swear to it. And then I'm going to hold the shift key down and slide it right in there. And there's one that's for that's so this is a delay for one of them. And then I'm going to delay the other. I would delay them both, except it is too complicated for trying to keep my uh, video today under one hour long. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, save and put ourselves in presentation mode here and lock the patcher and hit uh, one. We've got the basketball and two. Oh my goodness, look at that. We have cured it. There it is. Let's set some new, let's try just numbers two and three, or, oh, it's playing backwards, seven and eight. Eight and nine. Eight, nine, eight, nine. Good. I'm going to shift click on this and save that. And here's one, basketball all over the place, and two, eight, nine, eight, nine. Perfect. So that was the problem. Okay, so let's save this thing, close it and reopen it again just one more time make sure the whole thing's working there it is um play you think play there's basketball there's the movie. I have no idea why it didn't want to start. But it has started. Okay, very good. So now that we have this, let's just save it again and put it away and open an entirely new uh, command N or just go get a new file. So whoops, clicked on the wrong thing there. So um, now we have an entirely new file and uh, we open it up and we type a new object in here called a B patcher and we deck it out like this and open our inspector very nice and come down here to the patcher file that it's going to be linked to and of course you're going to select the file we were just working on and open it. Now, don't panic. I have noticed this before, and you may have heard me mention why I like to have, um, I'm just sizing this up um, to fit this. So you may have heard me mention why I like to put panels in instead of coloring the patcher, and this is the reason. Um, right now, this is the patcher, but without its background color. And if you go over to 
the B patcher's inspector now. Remember, this inspector is looking at the B patcher, not at your patcher. Um, you'll see that its background mode is in the transparent mode, and you want to put that in the patcher background color if you want it to look like your player. Now, if you want to overcome this problem, you will do what I normally do, and that'll give us another chance to do something else that I just want to explain right now. Um, so we'll go back and we'll put a panel in here that's colored, but here's another thing. When you mouse over these inlets here, you see, it just says the name of the patcher, the name uh, of the patcher again, and the outlets. Is this the audio? Oh, I don't know. It just says the name of the patcher. Just says the name of the patcher. So what we're going to do is go back to our object. But this is exciting. We don't have to just go open it again. This is unlocked so we can actually control click on this window. Go down to object and say open the original. So let's open the original and pull it out a little bit here so we'll be able to work on it. Uh, probably want to see the inspector as well. And we'll take it out of um, uh, presentation mode and then unlock it. So what are we going to do here? Um, first, let's just quickly label these things. Um, do you see where it says um, where the inlet is? You just click on it and then come over here and write a comment here. So I'm going to say audio left, right? And then come over here. Now, just save this patcher. Don't do anything else with it. Just hit save. And then go back to this. And now when you mouse over this, you'll see that it says the name of the patcher, but then down below it, it says audio left. So if you go back to your, whoops, I'm going all over the place. Uh, if you go back to now this outlet and you say audio right is the comment. Audio right. You can even type in instructions here if you want to. For example, bang starts movie or something like that. And then this one is video out in the comment. And then this one up here is, uh, you can write, type in here, uh, I'm sorry, comment. Um, bang to read movie file. And then with this one, you can uh, say uh, toggle, toggle play pause. Right. Great. So then if we save that, we'll be able to go look at the other one. And when we hover over them, it says bang to read movie file, toggle, play, pause. We get instructions and that's a really cool thing to get. So super. Now we have this object out here that we can use. Let's go back to the other one and just insert that panel behind there to make it all um, neat and clean. And um, <clears throat> so type an N for a new object, type panel, and then we want some sort of color for this panel, um, background fill color. Let's make it a different color just so we know that we've actually done something here. And uh, I'll just choose green randomly. Oh, it's a gradient. I, I'm, I'm not in love with gradients. I'm going to go with color fill and type the same green again. This is sort of a transparent green. God only knows uh, what that'll look like with the orange background. <laughs> but let's let's go ahead, um, make sure that it shows up in presentation mode. And then that um, when we put the put your patcher in presentation mode, so I'm gonna click over here, 
put it in presentation mode, and then do two things here. Stretch your panel behind it, and you can see that there's a small problem there, and then send it to the back. So go up and click on Arrange and say Send a Back. And we can see it like that now. So great locker patcher. Um, put it in. It, it's already in presentation mode. And save it. And you could probably put it away at this point, but let's go check the other file just in case we have to make any quick improvements. Oops. There it is. So now it's green, but you can sort of see the orange through it. If you went back to just the usual transparent mode, then we get a bright green patcher of the original color. And there you have it. That is how you can make a sort of standalone uh, component um, here and then use it just like a, uh, a Visi object. So I'll just uh, go show you what a Visi object is. You just click over here, click Visi, let's say Output, and let's just say a viewer. Uh, I guess you got to do that. So a Visi object kind of comes up the same way. This is a Visi viewer, and you can see, whoops, when you hover over this, it says video input. Hey, cool. So if I have a Visi viewer here, you probably wonder why we need one. I can go and find my video output that we labeled. and run it into the input here, uh, lock my patcher, and hit number one, and you can see that now we have this great modular setup. So that's it. You've made more or less a Visi component of your own, and also been alerted to the fact that there are a bunch of Visi objects down here uh, that can be played with as well. So that's it. That is my tutorial for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will catch you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.